Okay, so day two, module one, lesson two, proportional relationships. If you have your packet, it's got the whole question written out. I didn't write the question out just because I didn't want to waste time. So the key to this is determine if the cost is proportional to the weight. Now, these are words that you have never heard. A proportional relationship. When you hear a proportional relationship, especially when we're talking about a table of values, which is this, we are going to try to say, okay, to be proportional, we need to have a constant, okay? In order to have a constant, a constant means something that is unchanging. We need to label that constant. The constant in a proportional relationship is the letter K. It is a lowercase letter K. We're gonna have three, count them, three letters by the time that we're done. So now we come to this table of values, we're gonna determine if the cost is proportional to the weight. In order to do this, before we even start, every time that I look at a table of values, I need to determine what my X value is and what my Y value is, because we are leading into graphing these situations, okay? So in a graph, we have ordered pairs X and Y. You guys know that, but when we look at the table of values, my top table, will always, always, always be my X values. My Y will be my bottom set of values. So is the cost proportional to the weight? In order to find out if the cost is proportional to the weight, we need to again find that constant value of K. To find that constant, we are going to take our Y values and divide it by our X values. That gives me a constant. Remember, constant is unchanging. So when I do that for my first set, I'm gonna get a value. To see if it's proportional, the constant must stay the same the entire time. So I would do five divided by 12 and five tenths. And that gives me K. And you're gonna have your calculator, so five divided by 12 and five tenths gives me four tenths. So my K for this situation is 4 tenths. So now I do this, 4 divided by 10. Well, I don't need a calculator for that. That is 4 tenths. That's my K value. Notice how my K has stayed the same. Therefore, so far, it is constant. We need it to stay constant the entire time. 2 divided by 5 will give me my K value. will still be 4 tenths. Okay, so at this point, do I need to check my last one? Yeah. You should always check them all to make sure that they're all constant because they will try to trick you and make some of them different. So now I've got three and 20 hundredths divided by eight. So when I do this three and 20 hundredths divided by my eight, that leaves me again with four tenths. I don't actually know why I checked it with my calculator. I guess just to double check it. I seem silly because I knew the answer. I knew it was gonna be four tenths. So the first question says, Determine if the cost is proportional to the weight. So I could say the cost is proportional to the weight. Well, that's great, but that doesn't tell me anything. So for those of you who are watching the video, there is an equation that you are going to have to know for proportional relationships. So this is the equation for proportional relationships. And it says y, so my y values will equal the constant times my x value. Okay? So in this case, could I write an equation for, let's say, something that we don't know? 20 ounces. And this is how we use this. So now I'm trying to find 20 ounces. So my equation for this proportional relationship would be y equals the constant 4 tenths x. This is now the equation that goes along with this table of values. Well, what would I do in order to find my y value? I would substitute in. Well, Mr. H, what do you mean by substitute in? Well, we know my k. 
we have an x value. So I would now say y equals 4 tenths, which is my k, multiplied by my x value. So instead of x, I've replaced what the x is asking for, and I multiply. So now I have 4 tenths multiplied by 20, which gives me 8. So for 20 ounces, it will cost me $8. This helps me get anything that I want. Okay? Now, here's my question to you that I'm not going to answer right away. But those of you who are watching this video, what happens if there's zero ounces? How much would the cost be? So, for a proportional relationship, there is something that has to happen with our x and y values when my x is zero. So if there are no ounces, how much am I paying? Hopefully you have an answer to that. We'll come back to it. So there's your first example. Okay? So, go to example, I think it's example two. Ooh, no. It's exercise one. I put example two. It's exercise one. Go to exercise one in your packet. It's talking about calories burned while jumping rope. And I'm going to move the camera a little bit. Hopefully one of these days they get me a nice camera because I'm pretty darn awesome and they want to see all of my nice stuff and then I won't have to do that. And they'll be like, wow, Mr. H, you're amazing. And I'll just be happy. So this one, I've added on a little bit to it from what you've had. I'm going to wait for that. Just so you know, this is like during my planning time. That's the bell that's going on. Like we're going to have that every so often. It's all right. So I've added on to exercise one. I've put an X and a question mark. This is absolutely important for you guys. So I'm not going to read the whole question, but again, these are calories burned while jumping rope. The two questions that it's asking are the calories proportional to time explain and what happens if I jumped rope for six and a half minutes, how many calories would I burn? So again, before we do anything else, we've got really a table of values. I can make this a table of values. Zero is corresponding with zero. <coughs> Hint. One corresponds with 11, two with 22, three with 33, four with 44, X with the question mark. Remember, corresponding numbers like this, we've got our ratios, right? So, in order to find the constant, because that's how we're going to determine if the calories are proportional to time, we need to say y divided by x is going to give me my k. The only thing that does not give me my constant is this. So the earlier question that I asked you of, what happens when the weight was zero? Well, the cost is zero. What happens if we don't jump rope? We don't burn any calories. In order for us to have a proportional relationship, listen again, for us, in order to have a proportional relationship, you must start at zero, zero, the ordered pair of zero, zero. So when we start to graph it, which we'll do next week, you will need to graph at the origin, okay? Proportional relationships, as you keep moving on, especially once you get to algebra and maybe eighth grade math, this is going to be a direct variation. Y will vary directly with X because it stays constant, but it goes through the origin. And your algebra teacher will talk a little bit more about direct variation. But know that what we're doing truly is direct variation. So we need to find a constant. In order to find the constant, we take our y. So I'm going to label x, y. Can you see that? x and y, hopefully. If not, I'm sorry for that. So I take my 11. I divide by 1. That gives me 11. So I know that for this to be proportional, for my calories to be proportional to time, all of my constants should be 11. Most of you are smart enough to see this and say, okay, well, if I do 22 divided by 2, that also gives me 11. So my constant is 11. 33 divided by 3. Okay. So yeah, now we're starting to see a pattern. All of my constants are 11. So are the calories proportional to time? Yes, because y divided by x equals 11 for every corresponding pair. Okay? Does that make sense? 
If not, hey, ask, raise your hand. I'll still call on you even though I'm teaching up at the board today. But that should make sense. We've got a constant. Now, I want you to get in the habit of writing that equation as well. So what would the equation for this be? Because remember, we haven't answered this portion yet. The equation for this right now is y equals 11x. How do I know that? Because we know that k is my constant. And earlier we said the equation for proportional relationships had to be y equals kx. So I'm substituting my k in. Well, now I have an x value. What would I have to have here? How would I know, no matter what the value is, what would I have to do to x in order to find my y? Well, it's given right here. What do I have to do? So if I'm looking for y, y is 11x. So instead of this question mark, if I'm given an x and I know my constant, I know if that's x, this has to be 11x. Just like if I put a letter, let's say the letter is L M N, and I wanted to find what it was down here, well, I would know that it's 11 times L M N because the constant is 11. No matter what's happening, I'm taking my X and I have to multiply it by 11. So now we're here, jumped for six and a half minutes. How many calories? Aha, this is why I have this wonderful equation. Y equals 11 X. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'm still very sick from last week. I hope I get over this soon. So I jumped for six and a half minutes, wonderful. We're looking for calories. Well, I come back over here, I say, hey, my time is X, my calories are Y, so I don't know Y. So I have my equation, Y equals 11X. Well, let's substitute in. Minutes is my time, so I'm substituting in for X. Y equals 11 multiplied by six and five tenths. So y equals, get your handy dandy calculator, six and five tenths multiplied by 11, gives me 71 and a half. Well, 71 and a half what? 70 and one and a half calories per. Okay, so when I tell you that I'm giving you many lessons so that you have time to work, yeah, there's your lesson. If you have questions, make sure you ask. Now, are you done? Now, nah, you're not even getting your homework yet. You are required to go to exercise three. Oh no, I'm sorry. Let's make sure that that's right. Oh man, example three, I was close. It talks about the summer job. It said Alex spent the summer helping out his family's business and so on and so forth. There's a lot of missing things in that chart. You must do that on your own now, okay? Do that on your own now. When you are finished with that, you must show me. So you must raise your hand, I will come around and I will check it before you get the other homework questions. Everybody understand that? So, let's wrap this up. How do we know if two quantities are proportional? Well, first off, our very first point has to be zero, zero. To be proportional, even if it's not given like in the first place, you need to be able to think, does it make sense if my weight is zero, my cost is zero? Because if I'm not buying anything, it's not gonna cost me something. So zero, zero is my first point. Second, there has to be a constant for every corresponding pair. That is the same, the constants need to be the same. Then, how can we use a proportional relationship? Well, this is helping us find values that we might not know. Well, what happens, so when I boxed, I jumped for 60 minutes, could I figure out how many calories I burned? Absolutely, so this gives us hypotheticals that we can use. And last but not least, can we make an equation with proportional relationships? Yes. The equation is y equals kx. You have to find your k in order to write the equation. So, one more time, you're doing now example three. Talking about the summer job, get started on that. Once you raise your hand, I'll let you know what your work is. Good job, kiddos.